creation right I there. had this sudden thought of <laughs> I, I cannot put baby Jesus attached to a toilet paper roll. <laughs> <laughs> I can put baby Jesus in a toilet paper roll. Because it was a, tr- a feeding trough. And so oh, I was much, so I made that. And so when they asked, it was so now they're gonna get two and they're gonna say, Are there are there twins? Did Jesus uh, have a twin uh, brother? Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 I didn't want to attach it to the toilet paper roll. Well, I haven't gotten a response That's back so from my daughter and my son that I mail these things to. Yeah. Mom, you sent us a toilet paper. As they probably haven't read the material. Yeah, right, right, sure. right, right, right. yeah I paid good money to send you a toilet paper roll. Right? <laughs> well, then just all things are different. In <laughs> um, Gail, <laughs> Gail Boglita is here. Oh, hey, yeah. yeah, Austin is here. Hey, Hi, Austin. Yeah. That's so great. That so, so Austin, I'm going to ask you to unmute. You can say hi to our people and maybe pray oh, for us so as we excited. get started. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. Uh, let, let, let's pray. And uh, before I, I guess I, I just pray uh, for all you ladies. I see Karen and Lucy and Betsy and Eunice. I'm grateful for you guys. I'm so excited to learn more about uh, what you guys have done for your families and just Advent. And as a young parent and as a dad, um, I'm excited because today we're starting our own traditions. Uh, with December 1st. So, um, but let me pray for us. And then, uh, yeah, we can jump in. Uh, Father, we thank you for your son. Um, Gosh, what this season means for every believer and even a world that is, uh, I I would say, crushed under the weight of um, weariness and loss of hope, Lord, that uh, we would look um, to your son for that hope, that, that salvation that we need um, not for just for our, our eternity, but for right now, Lord. Pray for these ladies, uh, God, that you would just speak th- uh, through them to us, Lord, um, that you would uh, give them wisdom on how to help guide uh, this conversation and just give us uh, the tools we need to disciple our own kids and our own families. And so we're th- I'm grateful for them, and um, I know that you will use them uh, greatly uh, during this time. Uh, we love you. We thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hi, Paige. Hey, you. Are you going to be the um, mascot of this day thing? So cute. Oh, my goodness. You have a special Christmas bag, yes? I know. Yeah, my, daughter, so my daughter sent me a picture, which I think she just kind of be obnoxious about it, but the baby's two months old. And so he's at the doctor's and he weighs 12 pounds, 12 ounces. He's weird. He's beefy. Oh, yeah. We have big babies. Beefy baby. That's great. So Carla's here. Hi, hey, Carla. And tell them until we until we get started. Yeah. If they want to unmute and say hi, feel free. Hey, yeah. If y'all want to, you know, chime on in. We, we're we're not going to kick things off for another two or three minutes. So if you want to unmute yourself and just pipe on up, so we can hear your sweet any voices. Helpful suggestions. Yeah, or again, <laughs> tell us if we have something stuck in our head. This yeah. is the last call. <laughs> your earrings turned backward. Uh, yeah, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. It'd be great. Or you're only going to one. Oh, don't you hate that? Ask him. Oh, ask him. You go around all day and you're like, why did somebody not tell me I was missing an earring? You know, I hate that. Ask yeah. him how this sounded. Uh, if if uh, if you can, um, if you know how to like do a little thumbs up thingy um, on Zoom or whatever, can you let us know that you can hear us? Okay, is are we coming through loud and clear? Because uh, this is going to be a really short Zoom if people are going to have to read lips. <laughs> we could we could play charades. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but, uh, Lindsay Sharp talking. Okay. How is our how is our tech support back there? How is our sound doing with our, our tech team? Looks at you look great, you sound great. Just so glad to be here. Great. <laughs> awesome. Do they can hear us okay? Yeah. Are they saying all is Gail well? said yes. I, I see Gail. Well. A lot of people aren't sharing their video. Carla has got her sound on, no video. Lindsay, I don't. Let's see who else we see here. Okay. Yeah, I see Becky and Becky and Laura don't have anything on there. Lindsay. Hey Lindsay. Hey Carla. I was doing my BSF call in my pajamas. And I explained to them, and they were cute pajamas. I explained to them that when Anna told me this, that when you go to bed, you're wearing pajamas. 
when you're wearing the same thing during daylight hours, they become loungewear. Yes, yeah, so loungewear. Like that's that. right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and your leisure suit. Like day dresses. <laughs> and, and, okay. Totally, totally legal. legal. It's a world. It's a different world. It's a different world. All right. Well, speaking of different worlds, um, Jesus left his different world to uh, to come be um, our Savior on Earth, and that's what we're here to celebrate. So it is ten o'clock, and we are going to go ahead and get this party started. So welcome. So uh, we are so thrilled that you are here for. Um, our edition of Wit and Wisdom um, from us moms, and um, we'll let you decide which one's wit and which one's wisdom <laughs> and how much of which there is, but uh, we're thrilled, and we also um, just want to extend our huge appreciation uh, to Jeannie Cox for um, bringing this all together. Woo! Round of applause! Uh, because she is truly a force of nature, and um, uh, were it not for her, um, I'm not. I'm confident none of us would be doing this because we needed a shepherd, and she is an awesome shepherd. And, and she gave us her. Shirt. Oh yes, and she gives her lovely shirts. Okay, available on our Instagram page, which isn't a real thing. Uh, so uh, what I did want to let y'all know before we get started is um, that in conceptually, okay, right, every good every older mom knows uh before google was a thing every older mom knows that every good event would start with a notebook okay like a big three ring binder and it was the font of all wisdom you know that got passed down from one chairman to the next chairman to the whatever and um it just got added to year after year and the great thing about these notebooks is if, if somebody fell off the planet, you know, things could keep going because not the wisdom wouldn't all go away with them. Well, that was the old school with three ring binder. New school, Google Docs. So now uh, y'all are going to have access to Google Docs and um, all of the amazing resources that have been compiled for your benefit and that of your family. And uh, Jeannie is going to make sure that y'all know um, how to get to all those things, right? Um, it's in the chat. So it's in the chat. So if you uh, just kind of look on that right-hand column where the chat thingy is, and you'll you'll see the resources for that. Um, invariably, you might have some questions. We welcome your questions. I'm not sure we'll have good answers, but you're sure welcome to ask. Uh, we would love it if you would save those questions until the end. So just kind of write them down or something on a sticky note. And then we'll circle back at the end where we're going to deliberately allow time to do that, right? And answer questions. Um, and if you would, please, um, as we have all experienced to one degree or another during this um, crazy COVID season, mute yourself while the, all of this is going on because it's easier for everybody else to, to hear clearly if we don't hear toilets flushing or dogs barking or phones ringing or whatever's going on in your world. So if you would be so kind as to mute that, that would be great. Yeah, speaking of dogs, uh, that would be great. And, um, and our hope and our prayer is just that this would help you begin to build your own traditions for your families. Y'all are on the front end of an amazing adventure with your families and so thrilled to be a part of that. Um, but, you know, obviously our biggest desire is to keep Christ in the center of Christmas. And these ideas that have been assembled are here to help enable your family to make some wonderful, wonderful memories along the way. And we hope that that's what that will do for you. So um, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm, I'm Lucy Hagenbotham. I'm your MC. I'm to you live here from uh, the incredibly exclusive studio of the Karen Cope home. And um, we have here Betsy Kearns and, of course, Eunice and Karen, whom you all know from um, all of our little videos. And, and, of course, off camera, our wonderful Kathleen. Kathleen, come on camera and say hello to everybody. Welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here, behind the scenes helping. Awesome. Yes, the power behind the throne. So that's awesome. We're so glad she's here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take just a few minutes each. We're going to take turns. Take a few minutes each. And we're going to talk about um, what Christmas was like for us growing up. And then 
how that rolled into our marriages, right? Once we had to kind of combine things, what we came from and what they came from, and then how do you make a new thing out of that um, and still keep things peaceful, happy, and, and focused. So, um, so um, Betsy, all right, well, why don't you take it away? So I grew up in a family where literally the day after Thanksgiving, we would start decorating for Christmas and we would put up the tree and we would play Christmas music and everything else. And it was just wonderful. And um, the stockings were hung. And one of the things that uh, we did as a family is that after dinner, uh, they would turn down the lights and we would have, you see that flashlights and um, mom would read scriptures. So th th you don't want me to talk about the candle and all that at this point? Yeah, no, no, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so I married into a family and just because of circumstances, I, in my first year of marriage, Thanksgiving and Christmas both were up in Illinois and I got to my mother-in-law's house on the 23rd and there were no decorations. Oh, <gasps> there was a oh. tree, but it was bare because they would go to church and my mother-in-law would stay behind and she would decorate everything by herself. Oh. And I thought, anyway, so <laughs> that, was, that was a shock to me. The second shocker was that they would sit in, around in a big circle and they would open a present one at a time. Oh with yeah. Everybody yeah. looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> and then you pass it all the way around. Whereas we would have back home, we would have someone that would be, you know, the, the elf. elf. Yes, that yeah. would, would uh -huh. give everybody the present. And and I I just I have never seen anything quite like it. And um, the last thing, this is flexible, but it, it was kind of funny, um, is that um, I I grew up with cornbread stuffing, and there was this steaming white stuff that had raisins in it and I and I didn't know what it was so I skipped it and my but my mother-in-law was watching me so all I'm telling you if you ever eat at your mother-in-law's take a bite of everything <laughs> because, so otherwise, because you might <laughs> really unintentionally <laughs> offend but anyway so it ended up being polar opposites in many ways that both were self -selling. I'm sorry 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 and that's it. it, it, it Ooh, it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, Thank you so much. Okay, you yes. Yes, you too. You go. My family grew up and we made a great big deal about pulling names the day after Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving meal, I think it was. And then it was a big secret. And so when we were all little children, my mother was the, she knew that it, everything was going on. And all Christmas season, we would be, wonder who has my name? And then we'd say, and we all got a special gift from our parents. And we knew that. And we'd ask, is it brown? Is it square? Is it whatever? So the anticipation of Christmas was really like interrogating and questioning and curious and fun. And my mother was very serious about us knowing that the gifts came because of Jesus and not because of Santa. So we had our family Christmas the 24th. Oh, and yeah. so yeah. Um, so then I married into a family that just got gifts and <laughs> they could roll through that in 10 minutes mm -hmm. Christmas mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. And um, our family went around and we also guessed to see who had our name and what was in the name. Mm -hmm. So um, the interrogation and the name pulling went by the website. But my but the opening the gifts one at a time stayed. And when the children were little, we let them play with it. And I remember my mother-in-law, did they open all the gifts yet? <laughs> Did they open all the gifts yet? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. And there were little ones So those were two differences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it all works out with all Christmas. <laughs>
This still happens. It's awesome. It, it it's does. great. Karen, thank you. Karen, yeah. what about you? I grew up in Connecticut where there was lots of snow. So that was a big aspect. Of you actually had actually, a white Christmas. actually had a white Christmas. Wow. And um, awesome. it was real important to my parents, my family. Um, didn't really celebrate Christ so much in Christmas, but um, the traditions were important. So the big deal for my family, my dad especially, was a tree. And he had seen someone at some point take a base tree and then take smaller trees. And he would get in the garage with my older brother and they would pull these little trees through the big trees. So it made this, oh wow, huge, beautiful tree. But we never got them in, it took forever. I, also, probably where I learned all my cuss words was <laughs> listening to my dad in the garage trying to yank this tree through another tree. But um, so <laughs> trees were very important. So when Keith and I got married, he had grown up with an artificial tree. Oh, wow. Um, my, his mom was allergic to everything. Oh, and, my um, gosh. So he tried one of the first years of our marriage. We, of course, we bought, and he, he came from a family that his dad was an airline pilot. So their traditions, he was. He was so sweet and very open to doing the things that I, I wanted to do. So I won <laughs> most of the. <laughs> but so he was so he wanted to make it a big Christmas for me. So he went and bought a tree oh, by nice. himself, a live tree, and it was gorgeous. And we put it up, you know, and I kind of looked at it like, and so he got it. We put it up. So a couple days. I mean, this is not anywhere near Christmas. Yeah. You know, I started noticing already that the, the little needles were needles off, 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 off. and I looked at it closely. The tree had been spray painted. Right? <gasps> no. So the bark, the bark was green, but he had never gone out and picked a tree. Oh, that's his bark. And I didn't know what to, I was like, do I know him? And ended up, I mean, it was so dead by Christmas Day. But he had been so proud. But that's kind of our funny story. I and mean, I think we yanked that tree out Christmas after Christmas. Nice. So I mean, that was a um, funny story. Oh, my God. But oh sweet God. kept trying to show. He was trying to show. Oh, trying to, oh, yeah. Very hard. He was hard. trying hard. He was trying. Yeah. Um, well, for us, um, I, I grew up in a home I'm the youngest of six kids, so everything was always very loud and lively in my house, and my mom stayed at home, and she was a force of nature, and, you know, just like there was always something going on, and, um, but Jesus was kind of more like a seasoning that we just kind of sprinkle, you know, on things. It wasn't like the Bible was really a focus for us growing up. Um, even though we did, you know, I still remember my dad would sit down on the couch on Christmas Eve and he would read Luke 2 and we'd all, you know, listen. But for the most part, it was a whole lot of other things that were great and valuable. We loved it, but it wasn't necessarily Christ-centered. So I didn't really know how to have a Christ-centered Christmas when I started my own family. My husband came from a family who had always been believers. Um, and um, so there was certainly that component that was, that was core, right? Um, and we really didn't have any um, melding issues, you know, with like his side and my side and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do remember my mom, I was from San Antonio and my mom, I so remember this. When, when we started our family, she said, now you need to start your own traditions. We are not going to expect you to come down here. You've got little children. You need to start your own things. And that was very freeing to me to, to, to do that and not feel obligated to yank everybody up and go dashing off, you know, on the afternoon of Christmas or whatever. Um, so I really appreciated having that freedom to um, craft our own stuff. Um, he liked real trees. I grew up with a fake tree. I liked white uh, colored lights. He liked white lights. But you know, it's sort of like it's the toilet paper this way or that way. It's like this. We're not. This is not a sword we're going to fall on. Um, but uh, and especially since I really did great trees. So you know. So he, he and he, Mister, and like he's a nine on the enneagram. So he's like whatever. And um, which is great because I'm the eight. So I'm like. You know, and um, so I have a definite way that I want to light that tree, and he is definitely okay with me doing that. 
because he's like, if I would do it, you wouldn't want to, so you go do it. And I'm like, great. So we just figured it out, you know, and it would, and it worked fine. And the kids, you know, we had great times. We had, we had really great times. Um, uh, and, um, and our church, you know, PCPC, like our family started kind of at the birth of the church. So um, our church did such a great job of equipping us with all kinds of tools to, um, to grow our own faith, to grow our kids' faith. Um, and we did all the kind of, a lot of the all normal Christmassy things and they sang in the choir and we would come to Christmas Eve service and, you know, and it was great. And, um, and that was all, it's all drops in the bucket. So that was us. And that was, that was kind of how we did that. Yeah. And uh, you want me to reference the God with us? Yeah. So um, one of the things, the resources, right, that, um, that, that PCPC is offering um, is this uh, packet called God with us. Okay. And you can access this and it says family devotionals for Advent 2020. And I'm telling y'all that there is so much great, great stuff in here. You do not have to do every single thing that's in here. Okay. Nobody's grading you. Um, there's no checklist in heaven. It's like, you're a really good mommy. If you do the whole packet and you're not a very good mommy, if you only do two pages, it doesn't work that way. It's just a resource for you to use however it works for you but it's awesome so please please go find this um on the church website because it is really terrific so um second question are y'all ready um this is okay so um so this the the next thing we're going to talk about is what have become some of your favorite memories of what worked and what didn't because sometimes those are equally instructive right um that you had developed on your own along along for the holidays and um betsy i want you to get us started and talk about your candle and the your stuff candle for people okay. all that stuff so take it away betsy so my um i mentioned that what we would do after supper is we turn down the lights and have a flashlight and mother would light a candle and then i um I don't like to be cold. And so I, and I was living in Chicago and I thought this is the coldest place on the face of the earth. And God, with his sense of humor, moved me to Calgary, Alberta, Canada. <laughs> and so, you know, everything becomes relative. So um, I, one of the things they had there was uh, a candle that was numbered one to 25. And it's a British tradition. Some of you have that. Some of you can use just a can simple candle. Um, and I would, uh, turn the lights down and it and we would um, have our flashlights and we would read the scripture mm -hmm. and it really was very sweet and it's funny when you turn the lights down ev everything kind of slows it does every kind of thing slows down mm -hmm. and it's really it was very sweet and sometimes we would play um, Christmas carols and sing together um, but it, it was just a really uh, a fun time um, I'm a third girl and um, I always wanted a nativity uh, scene that I could play with. And hence comes the toilet paper rolls. And so with my children, we made them. And there was, I won't mention the name because I forgot to get permission, but there was a child I taught. And the mother arranged her nativity scene. Um, and then she would see it in the morning that maybe Jesus had been pushed out. And they were all around looking at Jesus. And this happened day after day and she caught her son who was three doing it and she goes and he said but they're worshiping Jesus oh. so who had it right oh. so I filed that away so I made sure that all of my children had their own nativity scenes after that and that's really why that's and cool. and I do this is so hypocritical but I'm just <laughs> confessing on myself I just could not attach I didn't Jeannie kindly printed this up you know I said oh I, this is what I want but you know she did all the, the the feet and the hands and everything besides I just couldn't attach baby Jesus to the toilet paper roll so she went and got the little doll things so I then made the manger out of a toilet paper roll <laughs> voila so I, so I didn't have a problem putting <laughs> baby Jesus in a toilet paper roll I just didn't want to put baby Jesus on the toilet paper roll okay judgment I don't know <laughs> <laughs> the last thing that we did so 
so sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing is the food coloring. So I grew up where every day was a little bit of surprise with mama. So I would have in the, the, the green would maybe be in my cereal milk, you know, or we would have mm -hmm. red mashed potatoes. I mean, and we were, we were supposed to brainstorm things, but I mean, I can name you a lot of things and you can see where my mind is right now, which is not very appropriate, but it would be in pancake batter. It would be in cake batter. It would be in rolls. It would be in bread. It would be in cornbread muffins, icing. We are having cookies. It would be in cookies. I, I'm, I'm, I've kind of got a sugar fix that I need to. to uh, 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 there's an edible theme. Uh -huh. Now, and you can also be healthy <laughs> if you want to go that way. And mother would do a green salad with tomatoes. We would do spaghetti. But every well, last week would be a green and red type thing with food. And it really uh -huh. was. It was fun. And one last thing that mama did, um, and it was mainly bathrobes, so, you know, judge a little, little I don't care. We would, we would act out, um, our children would act out the nativity scene and, and my brother or someone would read the scripture mm -hmm. and we would act it out. And then we are doing that with our children as well. And if you need bathrobes, we're great. Uh, construction paper for the crowns. I mean, you don't have to go bells and whistles, but I know that it's, we've gotten a few, uh, my, uh, grandchild wanted to be a donkey. So we got that on Amazon, I'm just telling you. And we got something else because we need an extra sheep uh, thing. And we got that from Oriental Trading Company. So anyway, um, make it special for the kids. And it, because my children now were talking about, oh, well, you know, I can remember being a wise man. And it was just really kind of dear. Mm -hmm. That's so sweet. I love that. I'm, already, I'm getting some good ideas. I'm like, can I go back and do this over? <laughs> um, <laughs> when there's grandchildren. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Anything else you want to add? Oh, oh, disasters. Let me just tell you one you thing. Can have, you can have just one. I'm just sure one you have several. Oh, many, many. Just one. I had, I won't mention names. Just one of the flaming disasters. I am not this kind of person. I have an eldest sister who's currently in Uganda, but I'm not going to tell you her name. And she said, oh, it will be so much fun to do a taffy pool. And your house would be ideal to do the taffy pool. Well, I would like to say that I am cooking the challenge and something, but, you know, temperature is important and you put the butter on your pans. We ended up with the taffy all over the house. It was the biggest mess. And then the little darlings we had it. After they left, I couldn't figure it out because my cushions were stuck to the back of my sofa. And what the little darlings would do is they would eat a little bit and go, here, I'm trying to pull the, pull, pull the cushion <laughs> off of the sofa, spit it out, and then just push it back. So they were glued on. It was oh, a biggest oh So I'm just saying, I'm telling you, it's a wonderful do outdoor that. activity. But when someone says, let's do it at your house, yeah. No, we're gonna do it at y'all's house. No, <laughs> y'all's house. Y'all's house. Okay, so oh, so much for the tapping. Wow, wow. Um, Eunice, tell us about um some of your favorite memories about what worked, what didn't. So, um, my husband has been. He pretty much it's Christmas with mommy until Christmas time, and that's fine. And when my oldest was about two two and a half. He loved to watch me color, me paint, all that. So I bought a really cheap plastic nativity scene and wanted for it to be a hand coloring. So I painted it and it was doing great. And through the years, they have just enjoyed, you know, getting in there, moving them around and all that different stuff. And then when my second came along, it was time to put things away, you know, January or whatever. And he was like, Mommy, do you think it's really a good idea to put Jesus in a box? And he was the one who would play with baby Jesus and the sheep and the shepherds and all sorts of things. So that year, the nativity stayed up a long, long time. I don't know when it finally went away. Through the years, we've also had dogs. And we've lost the angel, kept it for a while with glue and, you know, mangled looking. Somewhere we lost a shepherd, somewhere we lost a sheep, 
and a wise man. But why baby Jesus is still here, I think he was guarding himself. <laughs> <laughs> baby Jesus is still here, y'all. Okay. <laughs> then what worked and what didn't? Um, for us, unlike Lucy, we did the one year Christmas at our house, and then we would travel 12 hours to Pennsylvania. Um, we were living in Tennessee at the time. And so that was always, our Christmases were never the same. Uh, when the children were little, we would often go hunting for a live nativity mm -hmm. time, and that was a lot of good memories. We mm -hmm. often had Christmas music through the house. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked my son, what tradition did we really keep throughout the years? Oh, I know that one. No Christmas decorations until after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, but we've had music and Jesus is always the center. Mm -hmm. so. Awesome. Great. Oh, Thanks, Karen. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yes. Yes. Um, I think if you look somewhere to the attachments, one of the things I did one year that has been treasured in my heart is I got the dog and got some green paint and the boys and I put their paw print and hand print on different um, embroidery rings with just white, I think it was an old white sheet, and then put a little refract around it. And that is, I hung it up yesterday. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, is this where you want me to talk about the angel? Angel. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, this is in your packet, and these are ideas, especially this year. I have just been two thoughts have, have come to me, and I thought, well, if you sometimes just something hanging around, uh, Jesus is light. And the light is bigger than the darkness. Mm -hmm. And we need to know that Jesus is bigger than all sin, not just COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad. Oh. Yeah, thanks so much for putting for putting that in there. I think the moms, I mean, that's just another, again, just another really terrific resource to help reinforce, you know. I mean, it's all drops in the bucket. I mean, you know. Fortunately, um, our children's salvation does not depend on us. Praise God. <laughs> I think God, if God calls our children, it's probably in spite of us, okay, not because of us, but he does use us and he uses things like what Eunice has done here. You know, it's just, it's like, it's all drops in the bucket, those little bitty brains, you know, it's, it's great. Planting good seeds. And I think Planting I'll seeds, it's all good stuff. One more thing, yeah. and that is, each year might be a little different. You know, one year the angel might be the great thing. One year it might just be painting hands or paws. Or um, then my kids grew up and um, they didn't like me. So I decorated the tree and I decorated the dogs. And they had the coolest. <laughs> they, they were the little, best looking dogs. Were the best looking dogs. <laughs> best looking dogs. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So, that's anyway. awesome. Thanks. Great. Um, that yeah. is true. That is a good point, Eunice. That um, as the kids grow up, things change, and they don't necessarily want to do the same things or, or anything. And that your expectations just need to be flexible. Mm -hmm. um, I have not having really come from a, a Christian home. I was so much wanting to figure out what to do and how to put Christ in Christmas. So I tried all sorts of things. I tried the Jesse tree. We tried the Advent wreath. Um, I did both at the same time. Um, I have three boys, so boys, they, you know, and I loved crafts, but I wasn't really crafty, so I just kept trying different things. So things that worked, I ended up settling on, and I got this from Ruth Meek, who is a member of our church, and she does presentations called Redeeming Christmas, which are Yay, wonderful. Yeah. Um, and this I have in the packet that y'all have on the Google Doc. It's about um, how to spread out, do something each Sunday for Advent. Mm -hmm. And the, so each week you like the first Sunday is called the gift of time or service mm -hmm. and you would make coupons for each other. We did that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, um, you know, we did everybody. I think I did different things as they got older or they were just depending on kind of what their attitudes <laughs> or their, their buy-in. Um, so 
like the like you know my kids I would help them write dad I will you know scratch your back for 10 mm -hmm. minutes or mm -hmm. I will you know walk the dog or whatever so it's a gifts of service and then Keith and I would do it for them and kind of modeling that so each week it was really neat and then you had to do something like one week was um the gift of sharing it was something that you already had so um it was so cute my husband found his old ID bracelet from high school. They used to have ID braces. You give them to your girlfriend, and so he gave it to me, which is so cute. We kind of remember that. So now my boys do remember this. Um, when I ask them, you know, what what what, you, what traditions do you remember? It kind of was a little. They're like, uh, <laughs> like oh, it was a little discouraging. <laughs> but um, they do remember doing that. You know, as I started some telling them what we had done they're like oh yeah i remember that the other thing that they remember which is totally not religious at all is and i don't remember where i got this idea is we would do drip candles i would get different colors and, and i was looking for anything that would keep them occupied for more than two minutes and so we spread out newspaper and of course boys love fire and they're oh if you can burn it fire. if you can burn it, it they're in so <laughs> You know, I had Coke bottles or wine bottles. You know, the, of course, the Chianti bottle is great because it catches all the drips and different. And we would literally drip, you know, the can, you know, light it and drip. It's 30, 40 minutes later, we're still there. And that's awesome. Mm, that's what that's I was awesome. For. So that was Those great. Um, other things I did is, um, and we would go with groups of friends and we would have, I guess, COVID world, you can't do that so much this year, but we would have a pot of soup. And one year we, everybody brought their own gingerbread house and we decorated a couple of years. We did ornaments together and then we would go out and Christmas carol together. And that was really fun. I have good memories of that. I don't know if my kids remember, <laughs> but um, that was fun to be in community together and celebrate. Um, that the other thing we did that uh, again was selfish was we would put a present in the kids room after they went to bed on the floor and they could open that because they uh, especially my oldest would get up like at five in the morning you know they were up early and we'd said okay you have you can open this you have to play with it for a few <laughs> minutes before you wake us up Do not come down. and the other thing that Ben my middle one remembers is depending on how our house was set up at the time, we, um, the area where uh, the Christmas tree was and all the presents and we did Santa, um, we put a big thing of wrapping paper over the door. Mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they get, got to break through. Oh, cute. Like a football. Yes. You know, <laughs> of course they love that. And they do remember that. So that was kind of fun. And then it kind of hid, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. light. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so that was fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also, as it got longer and longer, we would end up waiting and we don't open our stocking till after dinner. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is kind of nice. They actually, we'd forget that we did it by accident because we forgot about them. How and does that even happen? I know. Well, oh, my I conscience. <laughs> so, they, so after dinner, now we now do that. We wait and, and boom, my youngest will go get, you know, get the stocking and bring them up. And we usually have fun and yeah yeah so, such fun ideas um, that's some of the such ideas fun. i can't think of anything else oh then my our advent calendar what i would do is um you know i would couple, put just another couple minutes uh, yeah. i would put um an activity behind each one and they take turns and that would be anything from you know going to look at christmas lights or today we get to make cookies or we read a book you know go pick a book i just i try to come up with an activity each day and then we didn't always do them and we skipped them and we'd have to catch up four or five yeah so um eat cookies while you look at christmas yeah so um awesome. that's some of our that things that we did um one of the things that uh that we did uh was um a happy birthday party for jesus um not only because, I mean, what kid does not like birthday parties? Any excuse, right? Uh, but even better if it's for Jesus. And it's also a really terrific opportunity for them to, um, to, to, to practice, you know, sharing their faith with their peers. And so they can invite them over for a birthday party. And I'm sure y'all are so creative. We've had enough practice with this by now. You could figure out if you really want to do if this was something you thought would work for your family, you could do it COVID style. You need to figure it out. And, and you know, because you know what? The kids don't 
No, they don't care. They have no standard of comparison, zero. So anything you do is going to be great, right? Like you're not getting great at all. <laughs> so it's like, we'll just figure it out. You know? So the, the birthday party was great. My mom would make um, uh, a, a birthday cake for Jesus. She made it out of angel food. <laughs> Get it? Okay. It was an angel food cake. And then she found it like the dime store or something. These little, um, you know, kitschy little angel figurines that you could put the candle in and it had pink icing, you know, and you can make it anything. You could make it anything. One year, our kids got a hold of the cake and took all the colored toothpicks and stuck it in there. It looked like a porcupine, you know, we're like, why are they so quiet? <laughs> oh, we have a porcupine cake. Um, whatever, you know, it's, it's fine. Just anything to celebrate Jesus. Um, it's really more just about the experience than it is the, the legal, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, you know. Um, the thing also, too, that I think is, is, is so easy to forget as parents, as, particularly as moms, because honestly, if, 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 if we're being just totally blunt here, the moms are the ones that make Christmas come back to the house, right? Moms are the ones that make it happen. And we get so wrapped up in making it about the kids that we kind of forget we got a husband, right? And I, some, I would forget, and I was so dialed into making it fun for them and focusing on them that he was kind of an afterthought. <laughs> and um, and I would just flop into bed exhausted at night, and he's you know kind of like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm kind of like, you know, get away, you know. <laughs> so it's like, what about me, you know? And um, we, the thing is, uh, we are gonna have, we are still having Christmas with our husbands. Mm -hmm. Our kids aren't at home anymore. Mm -hmm. So don't forget to nurture that, that part of your family that was your family before any of us ever went and squeezed baby out, okay? So, because we're going we're gonna to have him hopefully after they're all gone, right? So let's not forget the misters um, that, um, that are equally deserving of our love and attention and creativity and Y'all are, are clever gals. I'm sure you can come up with some kind of ways. You know your husbands, you know. And we all know there's certain things that pretty much any husband would be really thrilled if wifey kind of did that. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, y'all can just kind of keep going. Okay. Um, so lastly, uh, we are going to um, just real quickly, uh, real quickly, like headline fast. If you were a new mom, and you could go back and do it over again. What would you start? What would you stop? And what would you keep? Okay, well, I don't know if I'm gonna exactly answer it in that way. <laughs> one thing I will That's say, nice yeah. One thing I will say is when you have grandchildren, it's an opportunity to make changes. So you remember how I showed you my little flashlight, okay? <laughs> That they don't know I'm doing that. Ah, that's the mother of all questions. The big boy. Okay, so what I've done with my grandchildren is instead of driving around in the car, all right, we find out where good lights are, which, you know, you can get online to do that or whatever, and you park, and then you walk by, and you take turns on who's going to be lighting light, and then everybody else has a little light as well. And then I, and I cheat. I make a joyful noise unto the Lord, but I don't exactly, it's been pointed out, we sing on key. So I bring Anna Banana, my daughter, along with us on many occasions because she can carry it too. However, you can get music on your phone now. And trust me, it's a lot easier singing. To, and what's nice is when you're seeing some um, lights and such, if it's, it's the, the music's playing and we're singing away in the manger, people join us. No, that's me. Okay, yeah, now it's this. I have a new thing. This is what I'm showing. Remember, okay. I got the big flashlight. I'm being real fast. Do it fast. Now I have what they call the boom. Yeah. So we can go. It used to be boom box. So, so this, this year we're going to be even louder. So when they start talking about the crime, it's going to be that. It's going to be that. <laughs> um, and just 
slow down. One last thing. I'm sorry, Katie, yeah. but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Kind of like she was talking about doing a candle. If you put out, I, we have a nativity scene puzzle. When you're sitting around working on something, there's conversations. Mm -hmm. And it's not as, you're not asking a question. You're just sharing because your focus is on the candles or whatever you're doing. And you would be a mad, you cannot imagine how many things come out in just a conversation. Mm -hmm. Slow. Yeah, that's a good thing to keep. Say. That's a good thing to keep. Yeah. Start, stop, keep. Start, stop, keep. Um, I don't know what I would start, but one of the things that we have um, always, one of the things I would ditch is doing it my way mm. and doing things that are inclusive of everybody and happy for everybody. Mm. So some of the games that we play, we don't play anymore. Uh, but we might go to you know, a big light show or something like that, and everybody's happy. And we might, you know, splurge on a milkshake or something like that. And that just is a great way so that everybody is happy and enjoying it. And, um, you know, my way, it's not my way mm -hmm. or the highway. Mm -hmm. I can be that way. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'm really glad that I've done is. And baby Jesus, he's still here. My children know and love the fact that they got to play with this little set and that Jesus was hands on. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say, look for peace within yourself, look into Jesus, look, you know, love yourself, fill yourself with his love. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're inclusive and engaging with the focus on Christ, you know, everything can be fun. One of the things I'll say that I was so glad I did, coming out of a very anti Santa Claus setting, I decided I missed out on all the fun with Santa Claus. So I told my kids, okay, there really is this big secret thing going on. And they're like, and it's Santa Claus. Now, some of your friends will believe totally in Santa Claus, and some will say he is not. But we're going to play it. And so one day we would go to the mall and we would play anything Santa Claus, sit on his lap, take pictures. Uh, way back then, there was Orange Julius's, that was part of the fun. And there were some years when I thought maybe my kids thought that I was telling the big thing and that there really was a Santa Claus. Um, but that's so fun. Love the Lord, that's love so each other. Awesome. Merry Christmas. Awesome. Awesome. Karen. So start. What start. It? What would you start? What would you stop? What would you keep? Um, I would start. Um, I would serve others more. I think I would find ways to reach out and serve others more, do that together or separately and by myself, just as a model. And um, mm -hmm. there's lots of opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think I would have done that more. We did it a couple of times and I have good memories of that. Mm -hmm. um, I would not, it was so hard. We ended up always having too much, too many presents, too much Santa, too much everything. And to somehow lessen that. I would not do as many presents. They, you know, they like the boxes, you know, a little more than the presents. And um, mm. so that I would try somehow to have more self-control in that mm. arena mm. and um, keep, um, I, I love doing the advent wreath because it really focuses you and slows you down. And it would get when they got in high school and we're doing sports, you know, sometimes we did the advent wreath on Wednesday instead of Sunday. I mean, I just let go of that need to have control and have it be on the day and just as long as we did it you know and, and kind of let go of that um ocd part mm -hmm. of needing mm -hmm. it to be right mm -hmm. and so i i really loved however that morphed into as they got older even if it was literally one minute long you know mm -hmm. and we read scripture mm -hmm. and lit the candle and then they were gone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but um kind of making that and sending that message that that's what's important mm -hmm. Um, focusing on Christ and then of course you know focusing on your own walk with the Lord your own advent um, mm -hmm. and even mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I'm not doing it with anybody else just to keep my heart 
Mm -hmm. set because then I know the things I'm saying and doing mm -hmm. are hopefully you know how the Lord would want me to share mm -hmm. so that's that's my takeaway awesome mm -hmm. okay. oh and then um I, I didn't bring these up the books I love books and I love Christmas books so we spent a lot of time every night you know reading these and I would collect and um and you keep these. and I keep these <laughs> and I scoot them over <laughs> so yeah so these are all just all the books that we've collected over the years. And of course, they don't want to read them anymore. But once we have grandchildren, hopefully someday they will. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts. Neat. Love yeah. that. I recognize a lot of these. Those are great. Yeah, yeah. They're good. And um, let's see. What would I start, stop, and keep? Um, I would start, uh, I mean, on the one hand, it's like another like to do thing. But um, as my kids will tell you, I'm fond of saying anything worth having requires effort. Um, I would start the, the, the habit of writing a short letter either to the children as a whole or to them individually uh, that just kind of recaps what was their year like mm, yeah, that year. Good. You know, this was the year you got braces. This was the year you um, did whatever. And with technology being what it is now, I mean, you could take all those letters, handwritten letters, scan them, they would have their own book okay. of their special memories, you know, and I wish I'd done that because you think you're going to remember all these little things that they did and said the funny, whatever, you know, like when they put baby powder on the dog to make him look like Santa or whatever. There's too much. There's too much. It just, it goes. And so I wished I had captured that and I can't go back and do it over. So I, I wish I would do that with that. I would start that. Um, what would I stop? I would stop expecting my husband to be Mr. Super spiritual leader of demon because my expectation of him was so high. You know, we were going to have this perfect little Christian family and we were going to sit around the Advent wreath. We were going to be so spiritual. And my husband was going to lead us in a time of devotion. And that is not what happened. And he would read it. And, you know, you can tell I'm a little bit dramatic. And he is like, he's got an emotional bandwidth about this. Why? Okay. So when he reads, reads Luke too, it's like, and uh, la, la, la. And then my, my critical spirit is sitting here going, you know. So um, I would stop being so critical of my husband. And would just believe that the Lord is going to work through him in whatever way the Lord's going to work through him. And I didn't need to be his Holy Spirit. Amen. And I would, I would stop doing that. Um, I, I still need to stop doing that. I need, I need to go watch this, this thing again and like preach to myself. Um, what would I keep? Oh my gosh, we did so many fun things in our family. I would keep a lot of things. One of the things I would definitely keep is something that we called the 24-hour rule. And you can use it at Christmas. You can use it at birthdays. You can use it anytime. One of the things when kids are little is they see whatever they've got and they want to play with that, okay? Oh, we had a rule. It's called the 24-hour rule. And when you got a present, you were not obligated to share it with anybody for any reason for 24 hours. We did the exact same thing. <laughs> now, okay, a four-year-old does not know how long of 24 hours is. They just know it's a rule. They understand rules, right? So if you just say, oh, it's not a 24 hour rule, he does not have to share that. And they like totally buy into that, right? Like and a whole year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that does not work when they get their driver's license. Okay, just sorry about that. But when they're little, having that was really helpful. So yeah. I would keep doing that 24 hour rule. Um, I would keep, um, oh my gosh, y'all, this is epic. We still do this. Okay, I have grown 20 something daughters. And we still do this. This is something my, my mother did because of being six children. We didn't have many things in our stockings. Um, we, we take every little thing that goes in their stocking, and I have to count them to make sure everybody's kind of equal. And then the night before Christmas, I mean, before Christmas Eve, we wrap every single thing in tissue paper so that when they get their stocking, it takes longer to get through the stocking because they have to, every single thing is a little present. They're like, woo, I got pens, woo-hoo, you know? Instead of being, they take the stocking and go, you know. 
next, you know, it really draws it out. And then one year we ran out of tape. I have no more tape. How are we going to keep these clothes? So we went, we got duct tape. <laughs> of, course, of course, the kids were older at that point. They, they could handle scissors and not take control. And we're like wrapping this thing with duct tape. And they like finally get under it. And like, it's underwear? Like, yes, it's underwear. And they duck it. Um, so, you know, we would definitely still do that. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. To make sure everybody gets a different color picture because some colors may you know you can do some colors and you can do whatever you want that's what we do okay so anyway so start stop keep we could go on forever because we've got four lifetimes five five six lifetimes of, of stories um please come find us we'll talk your ear off um uh we we just want you all to have a really really fun time with your family but we have got some time still left does any for some Q&A. And um, uh, we, will, we will do that um, to, to close things up. But before we get to our um, finale, um, which you're going to be so glad that was recorded. Um, well, before we get to our finale, does anybody have anything? This is open mic night. Does, does anybody have any questions they want to ask the panel? Anybody, anybody? Do you, think we actually have, do you think we actually covered it? I, I would say one thing. Give yourself. No, there's way too much. Yeah, I would say give yourself grace. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we're so hard on ourselves and give yourself grace. It, it's mm -hmm. it's going to be fine if this didn't happen and that didn't happen and, and plans change. And the more you roll with the punches, the, mm -hmm. the more they will see that and model that, you know, for them to see how you reacted to things just give yourself grace yeah don't you think that they will remember how things made them feel more than they might remember the actual event or thing itself don't you exactly. don't you think so. and, i mean not that they wouldn't remember a specific thing but and what one one thought um without going into it but you can kind of use your imagination make sure that the big present that they want if it's a bike or whatever is from you that's all I'm saying. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So can I share a funny story on that? Yeah. While, while, we're, while we're waiting to see if there's any, any questions. Um, okay, so this was one of these um, uh, lessons learned. Um, we, I, I checked the kids, but I had been putting off taking them to go visit Santa Claus, right? And it just kind of got pushed back and got pushed back and got pushed back. And so finally, it's like three, three four days before Christmas. And they go see Santa Claus, and and so of course you know they come out like just ooh you know like you ask Santa you know and my daughter completely threw me for a loop and she goes I asked for a horn. Like, like, a, like a cow horn or a French horn? French horn or like a horn like what kind of horn are we talking about here? No idea. So then in the middle of everything else I forgot. Christmas Eve day. And I suddenly remembered as I was fixing the mashed potatoes or whatever. <gasps> the horn! She asked Santa for a horn and I don't have a horn. The last place you ever want to be on Christmas Eve is in Toys R Us. Mm -mm. Four o'clock in the afternoon, I'm dashing down the aisles, up and down, and towards the rest, looking for a horn, a horn, a horn, any kind of horn. What kind of horn? It was, y'all, it was so depressing because here are these families, and they're like, got their little children in their bath. like, you want this? Okay. You want this? Okay. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so depressing. I was so depressed. And on top of that, I did find a horn. It was their saxophone. I had no idea if that was what she wanted, but Santa had to show up for a horn. So don't put it off. Don't put off Santa. Anything, any questions? Yes, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they put in there, what are your favorite Christmas books? If you just had to pick one or two mm. that you felt like were just mm. enjoyable as they start to build their list. Um, yeah, I like, right. I like the point that your list is in the. Um, yeah, my list, I have this list, all these books are in the packet. Um, I, you know, they changed, but we really liked this one. It's called Why Christmas Trees Aren't in this way. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, my boys really like. Okay, my Christmas trees. Wow, I'll be, I'll be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And then, and this one's hard to find, but in the, I guess this must have been a mm -hmm. movie, but it's called Small One. And it's about mm -hmm. the donkey that carried uh, Mary mm -hmm. and, and um, it's sort of that little boy that has to, it's just it's sort of about this little boy that owns this donkey. Um, and then of course, I, this, as they get older, um, this one um, is called The Real 12 Days of Christmas. And it tells the story of what that actually means and how they were persecuted Christians and they were symbols of um, um, scripture. Yeah, so that's a couple of them. And I'm sure y'all know the tale, I mean, the tale of three trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I recently found when my baby was younger, I mean, the youngest one I was trying to look for new, and Mortimer is a very cute for, for preschoolers. It's a sweet little one. He keeps sleeping in the nativity. Um, so that's a few of them, if that helps. But the list is, is in the Google Doc and in this. Mm -hmm. um, great. Awesome. So that's great. Those. Awesome. Thanks, Karen. Any other questions? Yeah. If you had children in a wide range of ages, mm -hmm. how did you manage making Christmas work for both the oldest and the youngest? Mm -hmm. I, I can add one thing to that. We mm -hmm. used to have a rule um, when we would go on vacations, which was the three F's force family fun, is what we <laughs> called it. And I had two, and I, I raised four children. I now have three. And I had bookends that just didn't want to cooperate. The middle two, yes, the bookends, not so much. So <laughs> I would say to the eldest, you know, while your baby sister is enjoying playing with dolls, do not rob her of the joy. And I would tell my baby, the baby girl, while your big brother is playing and loving the snake arm, do not rob him of the joy. And, and everybody's going to have fun this holiday today. And at this moment, it might not be your time. And, and that way they learn to talk about service. That way they learn to serve and give up their rights so someone else can have a good time. David, I love that. Uh -huh. Do not, um, Do not rob them of their joy. joy. And, and it's really the three Fs, you know, that we're going to all have a good time. This is just maybe not your exact moment. Mm -hmm. um, they, the one thing that everybody liked was making popcorn. I'm just thinking about, uh, and stringing popcorn. And they mm -hmm. would also eat a lot or stringing cranberries. Those were some things that all ages could participate in and they enjoyed. Just mm -hmm. like that. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. There were 14 years in my family growing up. Wow. And so I think um, doing that name pool and being very secretive, but trying to ask questions, I think that really bonded us in a lot of ways. Definitely. And I'll tell what story on that one. When I was maybe eight, my brother, who was 14 years older than me, um, took a picture that I had painted. And I had to figure out who took my picture because he was going to get framed for it for Christmas. And so I was hot on the trail laughing. <laughs> so there was a lot of there was a lot of communication between us, you know. What were you doing at this time? And did you see that? You were the investigator. Yes, we were. We were all had a lot of sleuthing going on. Oh, we did. Um, so I, I, have, I have one more. I just I as the older kids, I let them be Santa. You mm -hmm. know, once they didn't know a mm -hmm. Santa. So they got to put together, you know, the gifts mm -hmm. and be Santa and help put out the cookies. For Santa, and they loved he loved doing that. And then mm -hmm. I think all the boys, I don't, I don't know if it worked, but I would try to get them to read the book to Boone. There, there was a six and eight year different. I don't know what difference pages there are, but that, you know, worked at least for a couple pages. Mm -hmm. um, and the effort of them, you know, serving. So um, that's the only things I can think of. But the Santa good. they loved. Mm -hmm. Good work. Yeah, any other questions? Well, we, uh, we are just about out of time. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, have, our, have our finale. Um, but uh, anyway, we hope, we hope that this has been uh, helpful to you. We hope that you have uh, laughed at um, our expense because <laughs> we laugh at ourselves. We look back at ourselves and go, oh, sister, what were you thinking? Uh, but you know that's just part of doing life, and um, uh, I think all of us we have really treasured um, that that season of of our parenting, and um, 
there's a lot of, I mean, I, you know, I don't know about y'all. I mean, there's a lot of that I miss, you know, there's parts of it that I miss. I mean, I know that where you are, you're like, I can't wait to just go to the bathroom by myself. You know, I just don't or take a shower or take a shower. Yeah. I just want to be able to go to the grocery store without taking half of, you know, the equipment list with me. And believe me, sisters, that day is coming. It will come, I promise. But when that day also comes, that means you're also not going to be the smartest person on the planet anymore. Mm -hmm. um, they're not going to think that you are cute and funny, beautiful, and, and so cute, you know? They're going to think like you're an embarrassment because they're going to be teenagers. And so, um, so every season, every season has its joys, its sorrows. So just lean in. This is where you are. This is where God has you of all the mommies in the history of time because God is sovereign over all things. He picked you Absolutely. to be the mother of those kiddos or kiddo in your care, right? He didn't pick Karen. He didn't pick me. He didn't pick Jeannie. He picked you. And as, as so inadequate as you may feel, you are eminently qualified in the eyes of our Lord. And so please rest in that because he picked you and he would not, he doesn't pick junk. God doesn't make junk and he doesn't make mistakes. So you're it. You're his first choice. You're not his penalty for these kids. And we hope that this little thing that we've done, you know, will be fun and helpful. It'll be one more drop in your bucket of all the things that will help you in your in your thing so with that in mind we just really want you to remember that it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect pretty good will do no one will know but you we love you merry christmas